If you clicked on this video, I'm sure of one of two things. You either grew up playing games like these, or you just like obscure trivia. Regardless of the reason, I'm sure you'll find something here you enjoy. If you're somehow unaware of what an iceberg image is, it's a format of sorting trivia about a certain topic in descending order based on how well known it is. For example, trivia entries at the top are usually well-known things about the topic, but at the bottom, they're so obscure that quite possibly nobody has ever heard of them. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the LEGO Video Game Iceberg, or more specifically, the Traveler's Tale LEGO Video Game Iceberg. Yeah, you can probably see why I don't want to say that over and over again. A couple things to note about this specific iceberg image is that while I did make this image, I took heavy inspiration from this other one, which I did not make. The reason being is that this one tended to focus on just raw quantity, with things like studs and mini kits being separate entries, and the entire first layer just kind of being things that exist within the game. I figured that combining things together makes it a lot more digestible. So I took the entries that interested me off of this one and put them into my own, while also adding my own unique trivia that I thought was missing. If you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, it helps out small channels like mine a ton. And if you find anything here interesting, or feel as though I'm missing something, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. Without further ado, let's dive into the TT Games LEGO Video Game Iceberg. Hub Worlds. From Mos Eisley Cantina to the entirety of Gotham City, every LEGO game has some kind of hub world, which functions as an in-between location from the levels where you can do side quests, progress the story, unlock characters, or a multitude of other things. They have evolved quite a bit in the last two decades, where they used to be just a place where you could buy characters and enter levels, to now them being even more robust than the actual levels themselves. Out of every single LEGO game, weirdly enough, one of my favorite hub world systems has to be from LEGO Indiana Jones 2. It keeps every movie self-contained, but allows for a lot of exploration. If we ever get to see a LEGO Indiana Jones 3, I really hope they do some mixture of this and the planets we saw in the Skywalker Saga. Flying between locations from the film would be really cool. Speaking of Indiana Jones, he has a tendency to cross over with the LEGO Star Wars franchise quite a bit. The first of these appearances being as a playable character in the complete saga, after you watch a trailer for his game. Then, in that game, being able to unlock Han Solo after locating all five of the hidden Star Wars easter eggs in the game. These easter eggs are as follows. C-3PO in the Lost Temple, Luke Skywalker in Into the Mountains, Chewbacca in City of Danger, Princess Leia in Free the Slaves, and R2-D2 in Desert Ambush. Find all five of these, head to Barnett College's library, and purchase him for yourself. Different Collectibles in each game, there's a certain amount of stuff you have to collect to classify a 100% completion. Normally, these collectibles are in the form of three things. Studs, which are the game's currency, mini kits, the game's hidden challenge rewards inside of levels, and red bricks, which are sort of just a special mini kit that unlocks certain extras within the game. In a standard game, there are 10 mini kits and one red brick per level with a stud meter at the top, filling up once you collect a predetermined amount of studs in that individual level. This has been slightly changed up in the Skywalker Saga, which has a much more open world approach. The game uses a combination of studs and bricks to purchase new unlocks. And while I wouldn't say this system is bad, it does make completing the game a chore. Bonus Levels Speaking of those collectibles, when collecting either all mini kits or filling in all stud meters, most games will unlock a hidden few extra levels. These levels are usually areas that were cut from the main game or special challenges. 
a lot of you are familiar with the collect 1 million stud levels from the earlier games. But some other examples include Young Indy from LEGO Indiana Jones 1, the Adam West cameo level from LEGO Batman 3, or the Gringot Vault levels from LEGO Harry Potter years 1 through 4. Extra Toggle when revisiting a level in free play, you'll often get a character roster with one character per special ability. If we take LEGO Indiana Jones for example, we get one version of Indy, one high jumper, one thuggy, etc etc. However, if you turn on extra toggle in the pause menu, the game will give you secret characters not normally in the game's roster, like Santa Claus or in Pirates of the Caribbean, a mermaid. Handheld versus Console While you may think of LEGO as more of a PC or home console series, it actually gets quite a lot of ports to handheld systems. Like the GBA, DS, Vita, and so on. The funny thing is, these are completely different games, they just share the same name. It makes you wonder how many original games you've missed out on by not giving these a shot. Because they're on less powerful systems, they usually have dumbed down mechanics and levels to account for the hardware difference. These aren't really my cup of tea, and I find that they feel a lot more stiff than the console games. 100% Rewards Going back to our previous discussion about collectibles, on top of just unlocking the bonus levels for collecting things, getting 100% in a game has its own separate reward, like letting studs rain from the ceiling, giving your custom character infinite abilities, secret characters, and so on. Most of these are pretty cool things to get and makes the grind super worth it. These are some of the only games that I feel a drive to complete all the way through. And while it can be tedious by some points, there is a really nice sense of accomplishment by the end. Level Editor In the most underrated LEGO game out there, we gained the ability to create our own levels. You can set up button triggers, raise the ground, place down custom enemies, build structures, and a whole lot more. It is a super robust system, and really fun to mess around with for a couple of hours. This appears in later games as well, such as Harry Potter 1 through 4. LEGO Indiana Jones 2 also had around 5 bonus levels per movie that were made by developers in this level editor, to help give you ideas on what you could do. Pre-order bonuses In more recent times, if you pre-ordered a LEGO game, it will come with bonus material. This may be DLC included for free, keychains, or even exclusive content that casual players have to pay to unlock. It's a nice little thank you from TT Games for continuing to support their endeavors. Taking a look at the most recent game, The Skywalker Saga, a physical pre-order would give you a tiny Luke Skywalker minifigure. Cameo Characters to pay homage to the creators of the media the games are based off of, on special occasions, Traveler's Tales will add them as playable characters into the game. From Steven Spielberg in Jurassic Park, to Kathleen Kennedy in The Force Awakens, these are really fun additions to games already chock full with niche characters. We'll touch more on a couple of these later, but I really like the way TT Games integrates them into the experience. For example, Spielberg gets to fight with Oscar trophies and film equipment, one of the most unique attacking methods in the whole franchise. LEGO City Undercover Releases LEGO City Undercover was originally exclusively released onto the Wii U in 2013. Due to the console's poor sales and by extension the games, it was then re-released onto the PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC in 2017 to reach a more broad audience. Since this, TT Games has not done any more console-exclusive releases. Mumble Mode up until the release of LEGO Batman 2, LEGO game characters didn't have voice acting, they would just mumble and grunt. Some people weren't too happy with the change to voice acting, so when the Skywalker Saga was released, a free extra was put in the game that allows for you to toggle between mumbling and voice acting. Shawshank Our final entry for Layer 1 takes us to LEGO City Undercover, 
where we get to play a mission titled Albatross that is a spoof on the Shawshank Redemption, even including a character named Blue, a reference to Morgan Freeman's Shawshank character named Red. Many of the areas of this mission are direct parallels to the movie, including the opera scene. Yeah, you know the one. Layer 2. Secret Characters Outside of just the extra toggle, LEGO games treat us to a multitude of secret characters. You might be asking what classifies as a secret character, and usually, I like to say that if the character doesn't have any story relevance as well as has a unique unlock method, they're kind of secret. Here are my favorite secret characters in each LEGO game, but keep in mind not every game has them. LEGO Indiana Jones in the Complete Saga Han Solo in LEGO Indy 1 A Hush in LEGO Batman 1 Starkiller in LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars Jack Sparrow Singing in LEGO Pirates Supergirl in LEGO Batman 2 and Lurts in LEGO Lord of the Rings, just to name a few. Now, when I was a kid, I was so sure that I had beaten LEGO Batman 1 all the way through. So sure, in fact, that I was convinced the entire internet was gaslighting me into believing that Hush was actually in LEGO Batman. So, you know what I did to prove that I was right? I sat down, and in two days, I 100%ed the whole game. And, well, I should have probably trusted GameFAQ. Nintendo References in LCU because of the game being released as a Wii U exclusive at first, the game featured numerous nods to Nintendo's history. These range from small enemy cameos like the bob -omb or Piranha Plant, or even power stars from Mario 64 appearing in random places around the map. New Adventures LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens is a very strange game. One of, if not the only games to be solely based off of just one movie, it's a surprise that they were able to squeeze out a full game's worth of content. Except that they didn't, because a lot of the extra missions in the game don't take place during the film. These include rescuing Admiral Akbar as Poe Dameron, catching Rathars as Han and Chewie, and much, much more. It really feels like TT was pressured into making a game for The Force Awakens instead of just waiting for the trilogy to finish. Either way, it's a very novel way of creating content when there isn't much to go off of. Mobile Releases Just like with the handheld variants of console games, quite a few LEGO games got a mobile release. Some noteworthy ones include LEGO Batman 3, LEGO Harry Potter, and LEGO The Force Awakens. These versions of the game try their best to resemble the console version, but the levels are way shorter and the games as a whole just kind of fall short. You can't expect too much comparing a phone to a PC. On the hierarchy of releases, mobile definitely ends up being the worst out of console, handheld, and mobile. LEGO Hobbit is unfinished. After what many would consider to be one of the greatest LEGO games of all time, TT Games released LEGO The Hobbit. However, there was something missing. The final movie of the series wasn't in the game. And while TT Games promised they would adapt that final film into a DLC titled Battle of the Five Armies, it never came out. While they haven't officially cancelled the DLC, seeing as it's been 8 years since the game's release, it's safe to say that it isn't happening. Various Easter Eggs Okay, buckle up, this is going to be a longer one. I made a community post in preparation for this video asking for your favorite obscure easter eggs from LEGO games, and you guys didn't disappoint. So I thought I'd throw a lot of the more general ones into this entry. Rapid fire, let's list them off. When turning off music in the complete saga, the band puts away their instruments. You can see Han Solo in Carbonite in the beginning of LEGO Indiana Jones 2. Playing as Captain America and the Human Torch together in Marvel Super Heroes 1, you get an achievement called Do I Know You, in reference to both characters being played by Chris Evans. 
In Jurassic Park, numerous references to Spielberg's other films can be found, such as Jaws and E.T. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Lego Star Wars 3 has a couple of Indiana Jones appearances when collecting mini kits. Lego Lord of the Rings has Hugo Weaving's Matrix character appear behind Elrond, since they were played by the same actor. Also in Lord of the Rings, there are references to both Skyrim and Assassin's Creed, with one character telling you they took an arrow to the knee. I used to be a Citadel Guard, till I took an arrow to the knee in the battle at Helm's Deep. And the hay bale jump from the top of this tower. In LEGO Batman 1, you can do the famous move where Bane breaks Batman's back even before the popularization by the Dark Knight trilogy. I'm sure I glossed over a ton more, so let me know down below what your favorite LEGO easter egg is. Child Flight In the Skywalker Saga, you aren't able to kill children. Well, that doesn't count. Instead, they just take knockback damage. Using this, you're able to combo children into the air infinitely with jump combos. People began calling this technique Child Flight. While it doesn't really have any practical usage, it's still a really fun gag to show your friends. LEGO Minions in Dimensions LEGO Dimensions was a very expensive game to buy and also make, featuring tons of different IPs all in their own little world. In fact, the game got so big and was taking up so much time that LEGO had to stop working on it to allow themselves more time to make other games. One of the rumored cancelled Dimension packs was based off of Despicable Me's minions, as well as another being potentially based off of Shrek, but with the game being discontinued, I guess we'll never know what they truly could have become. The reason this seems so believable is because Mega Bloks already had the rights to minions, which puts it one step away from LEGO Media, and with Sonic also being a playable set in the game, it doesn't seem too out of the way to count in minions either. Incredibles Timeline In LEGO Incredibles, the timeline gets a bit messy. You actually play through part of the second film before gaining access to the first. This is to set up the crime waves in the open world to help make the game feel more fleshed out. A similar but less impactful example of this is how you start out in movie 4 of LEGO Indy 2. But this makes more sense as to help separate game 2 from game 1 with the release dates being so close to each other. Concept Art While this isn't some obscure piece of LEGO media, I still wanted to include LEGO game concept art far down the iceberg for a couple of reasons. Reason number one is because I don't see a lot of people talking about it. The art is absolutely gorgeous, and it's amazing to see how it translates into the games. And the second reason is because a couple of these pieces almost do feel creepy in a sense especially in the art that depicts these huge, sprawling cities. You kind of get this weird feeling of emptiness, where it feels like a toy set long abandoned. It just comes across as a bit eerie, but more on that later. Layer 3 Cut Characters One layer below secret characters, we have cut characters. Characters who were planned to be playable, but just didn't make the cut. Tetrabit has a great series of videos on cut characters from LEGO Star Wars, like the Spaceman, Buzz Droid, and more. But some lesser known ones in the general franchise are Marty McFly in Jurassic Park, various different Pixar characters in LEGO Incredibles, and strangely enough, both Han Solo and Princess Leia in LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I don't get it either. One of the weirdest collections of scrapped characters comes from LEGO Batman 1. In the character creator, if you randomize your character a bunch, you'll eventually land on some exclusive parts that you aren't able to normally use. These characters resemble other characters from the Batman mythos. These are Black Mask, Huntress, Spoiler, and Asriel. 
All of these characters are present in the DS port of this game, all besides spoiler. Maybe these were intended to be part of LEGO Batman's extra toggle, but just didn't make the cut, which we'll cover in a bit. Frame-Dependent Tricks Those of you who have seen my videos covering various LEGO speedruns and challenges will know about this entry. But what a casual player may not know is that the frame rate of the game that you're running determines a lot of the physics of your character. For example, in earlier games like LEGO Indiana Jones and LEGO Batman, if your frame count is too high, your jump height is reduced. This can lead to CPUs not being able to do things properly. Speedrunners are able to utilize this function in order to do some crazy things, like clipping out of bounds in LEGO Batman 3 by lowering your frame count to 30. Cut Levels Just like cut characters, there are some remnants of cut levels inside of LEGO games as well. In the complete saga, there is an early version of 1-1 from Indiana Jones. LEGO Indiana Jones itself also has some interesting cut levels in both 1 and 2, most of which are just early demos of other levels in the game. But others are more like test builds for character mechanics. This trend continues into games like LEGO Harry Potter, where we can even see some scrapped cutscenes that were used to test particle effects. While the overall quantity of scrapped content gets harder and harder to come across the more modern these games become, a few of the more recent LEGO games like The Force Awakens have hidden debug modes to help view and explore other cut content. LEGO Marvel vs DCTs while this entry just may be a minor amount of trolling from TT Games, on two separate occasions, they've teased the idea of Marvel and DC characters teaming up in their own unique game. In the end of LEGO Batman 3, we get this shot of some silhouettes. When they fully come into view, we see that it's just a couple of normal DC heroes. But this is obviously supposed to be a riff on the Avengers, as evident by Nightwing hanging upside down like Spider-Man. And in the secret ending of LEGO Marvel 1, we get a shot of a very Batman-like figure in front of the moon. But it's later revealed to just be a version of Black Panther. While again, this may just be TT Games messing with the fans, this would be a game I would be ecstatic to see. Diving into even more scrapped content, we have an entire scrapped game, LEGO James Bond. Well, scrapped might not be the word to use here. The game never fully made it into production, as LEGO thought this theme would be too violent. However, a test animation was created to see what it might look like, and John Burton, the founder of TT Games, uploaded the video to his YouTube channel. Have a look. Star Wars 1 predates the movies. You may have noticed that in LEGO Star Wars 1, a couple of the things in the game don't happen in the movies. Well, this wasn't a creative deviation. This is actually because LEGO Star Wars 1 was created and released before Revenge of the Sith came out. So it was based on an early rendition of the script, which is why both Grievous' ship turning on its side and disguised clones weren't part of the film itself. LEGO Batman's Broken Toggle we mentioned the extra toggle briefly before, and how it appears in most of the earlier games. But there is one early game that includes the toggle option, albeit non-functioning. While most games give you exclusive characters for certain levels, Batman just has nothing. It's unknown whether this was an issue with the code, or if it just wasn't finished. But either way, it would have been great to see. My guess is that it would have allowed you to play as the characters that Riddler and the Mad Hatter are able to mind control in the game's villain missions, but your guess is as good as mine. The Tomb Raider LEGO Tomb Raider was another scrapped game idea from TT Games, but this time, it wasn't because of the violence, it was because of two distinct reasons. When TT pitched the idea originally, they felt that Tomb Raider wasn't a big enough IP to make a game off of and break even, which makes a lot of sense. Why play LEGO Tomb Raider when Tomb Raider is already a different game? So instead, they had an idea. 
They went to Lucasfilms and pitched the brand new idea of a Tomb Raider Indiana Jones crossover game, because the games do have similar themes. However, Lucasfilms rejected the idea, due to the feeling that Tomb Raider copied Indiana Jones, and therefore, George Lucas himself held a grudge against the franchise. Thus, LEGO Tomb Raider was shelved for good, besides this one last remaining trailer demo. Unique Magic Spells the LEGO Harry Potter series is home to a lot of different and unique spells. Spells like Flipendo and Glacius are actually from the video game adaptations of the movies, from as far back as the PS2 and GBA era. It really shows the amount of care that TT Games has for the source material of their games. LEGO Batman The Movie The Video Game is a game that definitely exists, and is one of the most video games of all time. Okay, kind of. You'd think it would get the LEGO Ninjago treatment, being a LEGO-themed movie already, translating that over to a game wouldn't be super difficult. And while it did get its own custom LEGO Dimensions pack, the only standalone game was a Subway Surfers-type, endless running game. A little disappointing. In the iOS version, there is also a very awful Guitar Hero minigame that sounds like they just took some samples of kids banging pots and pans on the ground and sent it in. It's really, really bad. Private Drive Private Drive is a pretty important location in the Harry Potter franchise, but doesn't get a lot of love in any of the LEGO variations. You'd think maybe a level or two would be featured here, but not really. However, the reason behind that might be because it was already intended to be part of the game's main hub location before it switched over to the Leaky Cauldron, meaning you would have been seeing quite a lot of it. Personally, I think that Diagon Alley makes way more sense for buying spells and characters and whatnot, but hey, I'm sure Private Drive wouldn't have been too bad either. The reason this is thought to be the case is because, in early demos of the game, in the pause menu there is an Exit to Private Drive option, which appears where the current Exit to Leaky Cauldron option appears. OP1 TA5 In the background cutscene in LEGO Indiana Jones 1, we see Indiana point at a blackboard with the characters OP1 TA5 on the board. If you have a keen eye, you'll notice that this looks suspiciously like a cheat code, and after entering it in, you'll unlock the Super Slap Extra. This extra applies to characters who only punch or slap, which just so happens to include both characters you play as in the following level. Meowthra Meowthra was a scrapped character in the LEGO Ninjago video game, and although I mentioned scrapped characters already, this one is... a bit different. Here, just take a look. You can see why I had to separate her from the others. In canon, Meowthra is a real-life cat who wreaks havoc upon Ninjago City, so a photorealistic cat fits in lore-wise, but not really aesthetically. Layer 4 Murder Scene in LEGO Batman 1 while definitely being the darkest game that TT has made, LEGO Batman goes to some very weird places. Like for instance, implying that LEGO characters can literally die. And while we'll touch on that a bit more later, for this entry, I'd like to talk about the fact that there are chalk outlines on the ground in some areas of this game. These outlines in real life are used to mark where dead bodies were lying in ongoing investigations of crime scenes. Rare Polybags Polybags were exclusive minifigures you could get during pre-orders for LEGO Dimensions. Only two were ever released for this game, Polybag 71340 and Polybag 71342, featuring Supergirl and Green Arrow respectively. It's weird that these didn't catch on more, seeing that regular polybags are sold by the LEGO toy company as a way to purchase individual minifigures. I Killed Them All 
this is a famous quote from the Star Wars universe, where Anakin destroys an entire Tusken village searching for his mom, including the women and children. This was something you'd expect to be mostly left out of LEGO game adaptations. But in the GBA release of LEGO Star Wars, we get a whole level dedicated to killing a set number of Tuskens, counting down with each kill you get. A very, very odd choice for a kid's game. Steve Sansweet Steve Sansweet is an author and Star Wars aficionado, being the president and owner of Ranch Obi-Wan, the largest Star Wars museum on the planet. Because of his close relation to Star Wars, TT Games planned to add him as a cameo character in the complete saga. However, he was scrapped for unknown reasons. You can still find evidence of his appearance through data mining. The reason that Steve is separate from both cut characters and cameo characters is because of how odd of a choice he was to add over anybody else close to the franchise. George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, etc. It's just an odd choice. LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars MMO Weirdly enough, LEGO Star Wars 3 had a web browser counterpart game to help promote the mainline console version. As the name suggests, this game was multiplayer, allowing you to explore the galaxy with tons of other players. This game was two-dimensional, and much more resembles a collection of minigames rather than a standard LEGO game, with each planet having their own minigame. This game is no longer available to play, and none of the assets have resurfaced since the game shut down in 2013. Years 5-7 through seven Recall Look, by now we understand that the LEGO game franchise has a lot of bugs and glitches. And while a lot of people may whine about the Skywalker saga on release day, I bet very few of them remember the initial release of Harry Potter years 5-7, through seven, which had such awful DRM issues that the game had to be recalled and reissued. These bugs would cause softlocks and crashes galore, and it was never even fixed on the Wii. The recall took place on November 18th, and was reissued later that same exact month, but the damage was already done. This is quite possibly the main reason for the Harry Potter collection releasing. 5 Minute Game If I told you you could beat a LEGO game in under 5 minutes, would you believe me? Probably not, but LEGO Batman 3 has a very unique sequence break that allows for every single level besides the first and last level to be bypassed. This glitch is a bit complicated to explain, but luckily, I have a video going in-depth on how it works that I'll link down below. It's just one of the many examples of how speedrunners will find a way around everything. And hey, while you're watching that video, make sure to check out my 40-minute documentary on the history of LEGO Batman 1 speedrunning. It's a good watch, trust me. Quest for R2-D2 much like the Clone Wars MMO, the Quest for R2-D2 was a browser game based off the LEGO Star Wars franchise. This game has you playing as one of four characters, Anakin, Obi-Wan, Count Dooku, and Asajj Ventress. Your goal is to make your way through the game's levels, collecting these different crystals for points, until you find and rescue R2. Most game links for this game are dead, but some users have been able to resurrect the game using the Unity engine. This game seemed to have been received well, and by watching old videos, seems to have a surprising amount of depth for a web browser game, with the option to both save and use cheat codes to enhance your experience. Cancelled Clone Wars Roblox Event Jesus, there is a lot of obscure trivia about LEGO Star Wars, huh? This would have been a cross-promotion between Roblox and TT Games, to help promote and sponsor the LEGO Star Wars brand. But it was cancelled for unknown reasons. Fun fact, this was also the first ever Roblox event to be cancelled in the history of Roblox. But not much more is known. You can still find some resources for the game on the Roblox wiki. Padme is immune. Although this may classify as an easter egg, this one is so niche and so obscure, I bet that 1% of players even know this exists. But in LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, you can use Darth Vader to force choke player 2. 
you can choke just about every single character in the game, except for one, Padme. If you try and force choke Padme, nothing happens. Your ability is blocked off. This is not only a pretty cool secret, but one that also fits in with Star Wars lore quite a bit. Lego Batman Eerie Vibes I've been wanting to talk about this one for a while. If you can't tell, I really like this game, but there's always been something off about it. Every single level is set in the dark. Civilians all look the exact same. Hostage situations, murder scenes, abandoned theme parks, and a tragedy. This game is by far the creepiest LEGO game. It almost feels intentional, like they wanted these environments to feel precarious. They wanted you to feel like there was more evil than good. But it does still set me off a little bit. Especially the theme park. It's always the theme park. George's Dog in 1-3 City of Danger in LEGO Indiana Jones 1, you can find a Polaroid of a real-life dog stuck to this post in one of the bonus rooms. At first glance, this may just seem like an odd detail, and that's it. But upon closer inspection, it turns out that this is George Lucas's dog, Indiana, who inspired the name behind Indiana Jones, as well as the appearance of Chewbacca. Darth Plagueis in the Complete Saga much like the example of Meowthra earlier, this is a scrapped character with a very interesting story. Plagueis is a figure mentioned only once in Revenge of the Sith and no more than that. However, LEGO was close to implementing them as a playable character in the complete saga. Which is very strange, since none of the characters in the game are deep cut references. My theory is that in the early draft of Revenge of the Sith, Darth Plagueis was going to play a much bigger role in how the movie played out, making him worthy of a spot in the roster. According to the cutting room floor, Plagueis would have had access to every single ability, bounty hunter panels, dark side force abilities, character hatches, droid panels, you name it. This was later repurposed into the reward you get for beating the game at 100% which gives any custom character you make access to every single unique ability in the game. Layer 5 Joker's Suicide In the ending cutscene of LEGO Batman 1, once the Joker is locked back up in Arkham Asylum, something, once again, strange happens for a kid's game where the Joker puts a gun to the side of his head and pulls the trigger to reveal a gag banner, alluding to the fact that Joker is making a suicide joke. He's so goddamn twisted. Swearing in the code. Despite LEGO games being fairly innocent, the code of these games actually includes some dirty, dirty language. In fact, it's just about every possible cuss word you could think of. Well, why, you may ask? It's in order to stop you from naming your custom characters awful things. In order to prevent that, they have to type the words out, tainting their pristine image. Different Robins in each game theory. Okay, so this is something that I don't subscribe to, but will take some explaining nonetheless. In the Batman mythos, there are around five possible Robins. You have Dick Grayson, the first Robin and also Nightwing. Jason Todd, the second Robin turned Red Hood. Tim Drake, the third Robin and current Teen Titans leader. Carrie Kelly, the Robin of the Dark Knight Returns. And Damian Wayne, the fifth Robin, biological son of Batman. This theory suggests that in each game, there is a different incarnation of Batman. However, this is very easily disproven. If we take a look at the console manual for LEGO Batman 1, Alfred specifically refers to Robin as Tim, setting him up to be the third version of Robin. This is also supported by the fact that Nightwing appears in tandem, proving that it definitely isn't Dick Grayson. In both LEGO Batman 2 and 3, we're greeted by the same version of Robin, whose outfit mostly matches the Red Robin persona owned by Tim Drake once again. However, the Robin that we see in LEGO Batman 2 and 3 is actually Dick Grayson, as told by the Bat Computer. This means that it isn't a different Robin in every game, since two games feature Dick Grayson, 
But just to humor the theory more, let's keep going. Lego Dimensions has Tim reprise that role one last time before we see Damian Wayne take up the mantle in Lego DC Supervillains. Because we don't see Jason Todd in any of these games, this theory cannot be true. I will give this theory some credit though. The costume for Robin in Lego Batman 1 definitely matches Jason Todd's the most, but that's about the only connection that I can find. Nazi Flag Replacement Despite LEGO showing off suicide jokes, murder scenes, and much worse that we'll touch on later, one thing they won't allow is Nazis. We love to see it. Whenever a Nazi flag would appear, a red banner with two stripes down the middle will replace it. It's unknown whether this flag was supposed to mean anything, and the closest thing that I found was this hurricane warning flag, but even that's a far stretch. Force Sensitive Trooper there is a Force-sensitive clone trooper in the DS port of LEGO Star Wars 2. The man behind the counter of the hub area can be toggled over to if you use a moon jump cheat to reach him. He has the same character icon of Obi-Wan, no helmet, and can, uniquely enough, use the Force. This is unique to any clone trooper in the franchise besides custom characters. In Star Wars canon, the Kaminoans were only able to replicate and create a Force-sensitive clone twice, marking this clone as a huge outsider. Snowman Staying on the topic of LEGO Star Wars once again, with some very precise movement in Mos Eisley Cantina in the complete saga, you can clip out of bounds behind the Cantina bar. Once again, this requires some very careful positioning as one of the Fets, and jetpacking to a certain place near the wall behind the cantina, out of bounds, and out of sight from any casual playthrough, is a model of a snowman. This was most likely placed here as an inside joke between developers. Nobot killed a pregnant woman. There is a peculiar character on Tatooine in the Skywalker saga. Once you beat the pod race, you'll get a mini cutscene showing a droid walking into an abandoned home with a kyber brick. If you follow them in, you'll notice the home has not seen many residents in a long while. This droid's name is Nobot. While the unassuming may just think this is your classic western ghost town story, those who are more ingrained into the Star Wars lore will recognize this character as something more. Nobot, or Ghost Droid, was a 3PO unit that was built inside the town of Mos Espa. For years, it would venture out towards the scorching sands and deserts of Tatooine, but would somehow, for years and years, despite the Tuscans, the Jawa, and other pitfalls, find its way back to Mos Espa. It was a silver model, with a few design quirks, most notably the serial number being scraped off, preventing identification. Tuscan raiders would claim that whenever they tried to use the droid for target practice, their weapons would malfunction. Scrappers would crash their vehicles trying to capture it, and some locals even tried dropping it into the pit of Carcoon, only to realize it had somehow found its way back to Mos Espa. This led to rumors that the droid was surrounded by evil spirits, or the dark side of the Force. But that's not all. The reason the story of Nobot is so disturbing isn't just because it seems invulnerable to any attack, it's because of the murder it allegedly witnessed. This goes all the way back to the first sighting of Nobot decades earlier, where it was seen covered in scorch marks from blaster fire and dried blood. Strangely enough, the communications module of the droid was modified to only play back a recording of the last victim of the attack, a screaming, pleading, pregnant woman, followed by a long period of static, before playing the recording again, far from the beeps and robotic sounds we're used to. As mentioned earlier, this character has its own little side quest in the Skywalker Saga, which has you exploring an abandoned house where the droid has taken refuge. It really makes you wonder why the droid has its own character in the game in the first place, or whose house this used to be. The Afterlife we all know that LEGO characters can respawn and rebuild themselves. We see this time and time again. When we fall off ledges, 
take too much damage, or even get our heads knocked off by sewer grates. But there are some characters who have taken much more permanent ends to their LEGO lives. In some situations, instead of just exploding into pieces, some characters just go limp. All put together, pieces in the right place, but clearly not alive. This is most famously seen with Qui-Gon Jinn and Darth Vader in the complete saga. You can tell that this transformation is permanent based on the reaction from the characters. If this was just a normal situation, they would just rebuild or come back to life. But the reaction from the partner characters seems to be filled with grief. But hold on, we see Anakin come back as a force ghost in the complete saga, and Dumbledore shows Cedric's father a guide on how to rebuild his son. So this begs the question, when the bodies go limp, what happens to the character? We can find an answer for this in the first LEGO Indiana Jones game. But before that, we need to know that these games share a continuity. While some may assume that one or the other is just a movie in the other game's universe, that maybe Star Wars is just a media franchise in LEGO Indiana Jones, for example. But this just isn't true. Because we physically see Star Wars characters in LEGO Indiana Jones. Not to mention the Han Solo and Indiana Jones crossovers in between the games. Both of these franchises are aware of each other's existence, and are used to it. Indiana Jones literally thinks he's meeting Darth Vader in this cutscene in 3-6, so he assumes it's a possibility that they could physically cross over. This sets up something big for us. Although there are obvious relics that point towards the existence of Christianity, like the Ark of the Covenant or the Holy Grail, we can also find one damning piece of evidence that points towards the existence of a Christ-like figure in this universe. In level 1-2 Into the Mountains, if you enable the secret toggle, you get to play as none other than Santa Claus. Santa Claus in this universe isn't just a fictional character, he's real. Santa being real proves that the saints of Christianity are also real. This along with the Holy Grail, the Ark of the Covenant, and hell, even Hinduism through the thuggy cult in Temple of Doom, proves without a reasonable doubt that these things also exist in the LEGO Star Wars universe. Even if the link between Indiana Jones and Star Wars seems weak to you, there are special costumes in the Skywalker Saga showing Star Wars characters wearing Christmas sweaters, as well as Han Solo being in possession of the Ark of the Covenant. Han Solo being in possession of the Ark doesn't make much sense. This would imply that time either works differently between the games, or that Han Solo and Indy can communicate between each other. And the latter honestly makes a bit more sense to me, seeing as they cross over quite a bit. And we see secrets like this all the time, like with Hugo Weaving's Lord of the Rings character and Matrix character appearing in these same shot. Maybe these counterparts are able to interact, like dyads in the Force. So if this rule stays true, then we have to look at one last Skywalker Saga character. The rebel soldier who you can hear complain about a second breakfast. This is a nod to the fact that the actor who plays Mary in the Lord of the Rings franchise also has a background role as a rebel soldier in Star Wars. Let's break this down. Characters who are played by the same actor in the real world are often connected in the LEGO universe, making appearances alongside their counterparts time and time again. This can only lead to the conclusion that they are somehow specially connected. Otherwise, why wouldn't every character be everywhere? There are rules to it. These characters bridge the gap between the games. LEGO Indiana Jones 1 and 2 proves the existence of the Mayan, Hindu, and Christian religions, which links over to LEGO Star Wars, where we also see Christianity present. LEGO Star Wars then bridges the gap over to Lord of the Rings through Second Breakfast. And well, that leads us to LEGO Dimensions, which is full of franchises such as Batman, Adventure Time, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Harry Potter. This must mean that when Cedric's body dies here, that his soul must go to one of the three proven religions, as with all dying LEGO characters. 
I know this opens up the door to plenty more theories, like why the events of Indiana Jones take place in two distinctly different ways over and over, and the same with LEGO Star Wars, but I've wasted enough of your time already. Thank you for watching this far into the video. If you've enjoyed it, hit the sub button and stick around. If this video gets enough attention, I can definitely make a part 2 covering some even more obscure trivia. This will not be the last LEGO video that I do, but I am going to start throwing up some more variety content onto this channel. And if you want a sneak peek at the next video, I'll be going live in around 1 hour after this video goes up, with what will hopefully end up being the next video on the channel, so stop on by and hang out. Special thanks to Greg for making me this really cool custom sub animation. And if you want your own animation for your channel, or something else entirely, you can find his socials down below. He works super fast and got this back to me within less than a day. Again, big thanks. Check out more of my content if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, and goodbye.